Good afternoon, dirty darlings. I'm Iron, the dirty dragon. There's actually sun in the sky. I don't know how to handle this. <laughs> it's been such a cold spring. Um, I'm going to tell you today about something called Hostavirus X. It is um, a condition that you can't treat, unfortunately, of hostas. Um, it's kind of degenerative, so your hostas, if they have it, they are going to go downhill and they're going to look fucking ugly. <laughs> um, it's kind of, it's really sad, actually. Um, I've lost about 10 now and I'm hoping that the rest of mine are okay. I've got probably 25 varieties, all told, in my garden, so... Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to just keep checking over the, le the next couple of years and see what happens. So I'm going to take you to my compost bin and show you um, some signs that you could look for. Uh, and I'll explain why in the video about why I have mine in my compost bin. It's not the best practice, but you'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. Hang on. These are my poor diseased hostas. I feel so bad. Um, Several of them are really beautiful and rather um, difficult to find. And all of them have signs of Hostavirus X, HVX. So they're in the compost. And the reason I'm putting them in the compost and not in the garbage is because this soil has already got bits of these hostas in it and everything. So I'm going to cover this whole bin up and leave it for about two years all of the compost bins for that matter for about two years so that I know that the virus is no longer in the soil. Um, so I'm going to show you some examples of what Hossavirus X looks like on a diseased plant. This one here is a really good example of collapsed tissue. There's something called seersucker which is um, the puckering that you can see uh, in healthy hostas. The tissue collapse is when it actually looks more, it almost looks like it's uh, some kind of reptile skin or something. It's really not healthy looking. Like you can see here, the bumps are kind of uneven and the texture of the leaf itself is almost, uh, it just doesn't look very healthy. It looks collapsed right in there. Um, this is maybe not the best example of a leaf that's damaged by it. There's another one that has the same kind of thing. Looks kind of warty. Yeah, and this one here has uh, something that they call um, bleeding, I think, or bleaching, or le leaching, I don't know what it is. Anyway, you see how all here, this area would normally be uh, white. And here's a healthier, this is what the margin should look like. White, this is a sign of the disease. The veining is green. And then this part here is all green and mottled. That's not the way it's supposed to look. So those are two, two main signs of um, Hostavirus X. There's more of that weird puckering. And I mean, when the tissue collapses, you like it really looks, um, it really doesn't look healthy. Like it starts to actually kind of fold in on itself. It looks really dry, like toad skin. Not healthy sear suckering. Yeah, so that's a that's a diseased one there. I'm going to pause it and see if I can find some other signs too on the other one. Okay, so this is another one example here. This part should all be white, but it's got splotches of yellow in the part that's variegated. Um, variegation Okay, so here's one that actually looks healthy on the same exact plant. Very healthy. The variegation should be clean cut. There's no um, weird sketchy lines. It's not blurred. 
but on that one that I just showed you, I'll go back to that, there's blotches of, of like the pale green in the middle there. That should never happen. So that's a sign of the disease happening. So, and there's another, there's another leaf on the same plant. You can see it starting there too. Oh, I just feel terrible. These are my babies. So putting them in the compost like this is really, really hard for me. This one is really far along. It's got that weird um, tissue collapse here on this leaf. That weird sort of scaly reptile skin. And uh, all this blotchy green in here. None of that is supposed to happen on a healthy plant. This leaf is showing it really clearly. Oh my gosh, this video is terrible. Sorry, you guys. I'm trying to do this, holding it in one hand and then showing you with the other hand. So, And then the leaves, of course, keep coming in the way. You see there, the tissue is starting to collapse and the leaf looks kind of mottled. Here's one that shows the green veining really clearly. That's not supposed to happen. The veins should be barely visible. Like there's a healthier looking one on the same plant. Veins are just lines, but on this one leaf here, they're green. That's it, basically bleeding. The cells are bleeding into the leaf. Um, just, oh, just so sad. This one up here, this one, <laughs> So this one actually has red stems, and so it was kind of a special one too. And I don't see what I was worried about on it in this video, but um, chances are sometimes that uh, only one or two leaves will show it. And you can't remove just part of the plant, unfortunately, you have to remove the entire thing because um, the virus goes down into the, uh, the roots and um, so the whole plant is infected and it's not a good idea to plant anything, another hosta I should say, in that area for two years just to be absolutely sure. From now on what I'm going to do is I'm going to not cut my hostas at all with my tools and when I start to cut my hostas again I'll be sure to use um, sterilizing between. Uh, anyway, okay, so that's Hostavirus X. Be sure to check your hostas, um, sterilize your tools. Uh, and uh, if you don't have the option of putting them in a compost that you can just leave for years, then dispose of them in the garbage. Don't um, put them in a compost where you are going to use the soil um, that might go back into another bed with the hostas, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so that's Hostavirus X. Okay, so that is Hostavirus X. Um, check your plants for it, and uh, I really, really hope that you don't have any troubles with it. Um, I think I mentioned in the videos, dispose of it in the garbage, not in your compost bin, unless, like me, you have the luxury of leaving it for two years to see whether or not, or to make sure that the soil is no, no longer contaminated because you don't want to risk putting that on your beds and then giving it to another hosta or all of your hostas or anything. Um, yeah, so check them and uh, best of luck to you. Peace out.